Hi, welcome to the Umbrella Academy of Fan Experience. I'm so excited. This is actually the first live panel I've ever done, so fingers <laughs> crossed for all of us. Um, I am so excited to talk about the Umbrella Academy and how much we all love it. And um, I guess let's get started introducing ourselves. Uh, let's all do our names, pronouns if you want, and then like a little bit about yourself, like maybe your the brands that you work for or what you do or what your you know personal connection to the Umbrella Academy or something like that. Um, I can start. I am Jordan Ellis. I run Jordan Denae and co-run the Sartorial Geek. And my pronouns are she, her. Um, and then let's, since we're all in the same order, let's like go down the list. Oh, opposite, since I'm married. Um, so we can start with Liana, if you want. Hey everyone, I'm Liana Kangas. Uh, my pronouns are she, her and I'm a professional comic artist. Hi, I'm Rose. Uh, I run Fan Mailbox and Charm the Box of Shadows, and so my pronouns are she, her. Um, I'm Emily, also known as Our Shield Maiden, and my pronouns are she, her as well, and I am a cosplayer. Hi, I'm Che Grayson. My pronouns are she, her, and I am a comic book writer and animation writer. Hi, I'm Eileen. Uh, my pronouns are she, they. Uh, I am an officer for Geek Girl Brunch in New York City, and I also work for the Little Pillow Alliance. Sweet. I was thinking we could start out, because the Umbrella Academy is obviously a show and a comic book, um, and I think it might be helpful if we tell each other and also anyone watching, like, which of those things we, like, you know, uh, just so we kind of know, like, what, um, what we're drawing off of. So I have seen the show I think I watched it three times front to back um, in preparation <laughs> for season two, but I haven't read a single comic, so I don't know that world at all. Um, we can just go through the same order. That's easy. Okay. Um, I think I had first heard about the comic book when I was a uh, key holder at Hot Topic uh, back in 2000, whatever. Um, <laughs> and then I had since worked uh, comics retail and now obviously creating in the industry. And uh, Gerard Way is the writer. Um, as most of the viewers probably know, is in the band My Chemical Romance, which is why Hot Topic, I think, had like somehow featured something like that. And uh, I ended up reading the book at that time, I think, as a part of promo stuff. But then obviously, like, big fan of Gabriel Ba, the artist um, of the graphic novel. So, like, I had actually reread it in anticipation for this after, you know, watching the show back when it first released and, like, was blown away about, you know, um, how it was translated, so. Sweet. So I watched the show in quarantine, so very recently. Um, <laughs> and uh, back, again, a long time ago. I mean, I think uh, I've been going to Comic Cons for like ever, and Umbrella Academy has like kind of been like in the ether for like a really long time. Um, and so uh, I read a few of the trades, um, but not recently, so. Ooh. Lost in my memory a little bit. Um, I have seen the show. I've not read the comic books. Um, I don't particularly have an interest in reading the comic books, um, mainly because I have heard of the changes and a lot of the changes that they made are what makes it appealing to me um, from the comic books. So I'm fine with just my, my show knowledge. Um, but yeah, I marathoned the whole first season in one day. Like I literally <laughs> couldn't stop watching it. So um, I'm a huge fan and I'm really excited for season two. Uh, yeah, I have only seen the show and I saw it when it first came out last year. So I binged it over the weekend. Um, but I'm definitely interested in reading the comics. Uh, I also read the comics and watched the show. Um, I read the comics a long time ago um, and didn't realize that there was a third volume until last year somewhere. Cause like, it just took so long between the, like the second volume and the third volume that I was like, mm -hmm. oh, we're just getting a show and not like never really finishing the comics. And I'm like, that makes sense. Um, and then I found out that there was a third, which again, didn't really finish the story comics. It just was another cliffhanger. So I I do say that I do like the changes that were made though. Um, oh, I, yeah. And I do understand why they were made like for a TV translation. 
That's actually the the first question I was going to ask is for people <laughs> who have experienced both, which Emily touched on. Uh, what did you think about the changes or um, how do you feel like the adaptation was or what do you think? What are your personal thoughts about it? I'm curious as to how much, uh, you know, the creative uh, team in the graphic novel had, you know, over any type of television. Like I have limited knowledge of, you know, television uh, writing and stuff like that. And like, you know, depending on like if there's a staff and, uh, but the way that the changes that were implemented in order to make it palatable as a TV show hit all of the right notes, I think obviously for all of us and like, other viewers to make it that much more enjoyable as you know visual you know film as opposed to reading it in a comic and i think that as long you know the fact that they were like very flexible with casting and things like that that was the best part for me because they chose you know uh heroes that were going to be um you know that people look up, up to, you know? So, uh, and the way they translated the story, I mean, I think mostly in the first two trades for the first season um, and integrating all of the character development into it, um, yeah. almost kind of at the beginning, almost like you're getting punched in the face with it. Mm -hmm. uh, great to me because it keeps you interested and you follow the rest of it, so. Yeah, I agree. I think, I think a lot of it had to do with like, they just had in a sense more time with the characters and so thus we had more time with the characters and so like some of the changes are just like you end up liking the characters a lot more because like I did not like Diego or the Kraken in the comics yeah. too much I was like he's real creepy <laughs> I don't like he's him mean all the time he's so mean and he's like obsessed <laughs> with Vanya but also mean yeah. to her and I'm like, like this yeah. is so weird um and I also like enjoyed some of the like slight changes to the powers because it kind of it balanced and like they may just like it might just be a thing of like people's powers just slightly expand over time like we kind of saw with Klaus in the first season mm -hmm. but um they if you don't know the comics they kind of lessened uh the rumors powers and Klaus's powers so Allison and um Klaus got lesser powers but they obviously have a chance to expand it more and i they also made allison uh, to, in in my respect at least when you're getting to know her a bit more likable because she's very she can be very manipulative in the comics and it, because like she's yeah. very scarlet witchy where like mm -hmm. she not only can oh, manipulate right. minds yeah she's yeah. aggressive with it it's like not only can she manipulate minds she can manipulate reality like to a greater extent than just like oh i'm gonna influence you to do a thing um and she's not as like in the show, I feel like she's she holds back a lot more because like she's like, I can hurt people with this. While in the comics, yeah, I think like everybody's just more aggressive with their powers. They're just like, ah, yes, we are superheroes, so we can do things. And you're like, <laughs> that no, don't do it. And there's this supernatural element too that are in the comics that are uh fed into the show a lot less intense to where it's a lot easier to ingest, I guess and have the characters uh, more reasonably react to what's going on. So, I mean, obviously time travel and stuff like that, totally uh, sci-fi and weird, but um, in the comics, I mean, there's like statues killing each other and the, the Eiffel Tower. Yeah. Right, so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> there's alien mud wrestling, it's not mud wrestling, but they're like alien <laughs> wrestling rings and I'm like, Love this in a comic, but I was like, I could see how yeah. it could turn yeah, someone maybe. away. Oh, in a show. <laughs> we'd love to see the it. The eternal but... struggle of comics to TV is like, how weird can we actually go? Yeah. Do we dial this back like a lot? Yeah. <laughs> I will um, say, it. oh, sorry. No, I was no, going to go say it really quickly. I did like the change of like Letter not being a super, super villain, like yes. just showing the power of someone like quote unquote normal um being like hey i can slowly turn one of you against each other versus like i'm a super villain skeletal vampire man <laughs> that's going to turn you against your family and use your villain power violent powers i do think for those that um this isn't like spoiler territory but um what Elon is like touching base on is 
Vanya's uh, character development almost it was like drawn out in the TV show and very much like short in the graphic novel versus what yeah. we were talking about earlier how it swapped so it's kind of cool yeah I had that thought when I was watching because I was like the stuff that I remember is that that stuff hits you really quickly and I was like this is a slow burn on Vanya but I actually mm -hmm. loved it that way yeah cool um, this is a question that everyone can answer if you want. Um, which of the characters from the Umbrella Academy, and this can be anyone, it doesn't have to be like one of the one of the siblings, which character do you relate most to? Or which characters do you relate most to in the story? Oh, okay, I have one. Anyone can go in any order if you want. We do, uh, I'll just go first since I'm at the top. Hazel and Chacha, yeah, cool. always. Both of them at the same time. <laughs> and we actually on this live haven't talked about your, <laughs> yeah, your makeup yet. I did the eyeshadow just for them. Um, <laughs> like the comedy and inner dialogue of like taking things seriously and then just kind of like having the struggle of being like, do I want to keep doing this? You know, back and forth. And the camaraderie that they're kind of stuck in is like my favorite thing ever. And I relate to it in a lot of ways in the comic industry and stuff. So I love that answer. I was not expecting anyone to say that. So that's great. <laughs> I'm still thinking, so someone else go. Cool. Um, for me, it's Allison and Klaus. Um, just being off the wall, um, like energetic, but also like I, I, I related to Allison in that whole like sometimes that like she she weirdly has imposter syndrome, which like makes sense because she's like all I've gotten is from my powers, and like mm -hmm. if I didn't have these powers, like I wouldn't have the life that I lead. Um, and like never knowing if you're actually talented or if it's just you've manipulated people. Um, and then with Klaus just being like, ah, like not reaching, like being scared of reaching my full potential um, mm -hmm. and what that would entail for me. So real deep, my, I love them too. I just like want to keep them safe and just on the side. <laughs> <laughs> just like give me Allison and give me Klaus and let me keep them. Thanks. Get it. Like, sorry. No, um, that's okay. And I was like clearing my throat, and then I realized I should just talk now that I've yeah, go for it. Clearing <laughs> my throat. Um, I think for me it's Allison and Five. I I obviously love Allison. I cosplay her, um, both her adult and her child version. Um, oh yeah, but, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, but um, I think five is probably the personality that I identify the most with, like overall, just because um, I was always a very serious kid. I was, I, I feel like I've always been an old person. Like, that's just who I am, is, <laughs> like in my soul. Like, if you seen like even my apartment or like the way that I live, like, I live like a 70 year old woman and I'm fine <laughs> with it. Um, and so I just really identify with that. Um, like being too old, because I feel like that's always what people, or and too serious uh, for your age. That's just what people would always tell my mom. My poor mom was like, she's just, a, she's just different. And I <laughs> we were like, she's 10. Why is she, you know, I don't know. I don't know what I did, but I was just like a very chill child, very like old soul. Um, so five, I feel like really connected with me. But Allison as well, I think kind of what, what was already touched on with like the whole imposter syndrome thing, trying to fit in um, and feeling like, I don't know, almost like afraid of yourself in a way, um, but also really misunderstood. I think a lot of people are like, why would you cosplay Allison? She's so stuck up. Mm. I've definitely got that like several times. And I was like, I don't think she is stuck up. Like, I don't think that's what it is. Um, I can see why people think that. Yeah. But I that's not what it is. It's more of like that she's she's almost too scared to be herself and to exist in her in her own space because she knows that there is like this dangerous side that she hasn't necessarily um, found a balance to. It's more so just that she has suppressed it. <laughs> Mm. Um, and so I think that that's actually really relatable. But. Yeah, that's such a common thing too. Like that vibe is that's taken as like being full of yourself is so often not that. It's just like the perception of other people. So yeah, yeah. Totally I, get think that. For, I think for me, the character I I actually identify with the most is uh, Vanya because I kind of my 
experience and my interpersonal relationships with my family. I come from a really big family, but like it tends to like in whatever part of my life be very complicated. And I've always felt like kind of the outsider of my family, um, like not my immediate family, but my bigger family. And so I definitely resonated with this idea that like you kind of, you want so bad to be a part, but you, you feel like you get these little messages that you're not, not that you're not good enough, but you don't quite fit. And so you're willing to just like take what you can get and stay on the sidelines of the family and kind of like be in the satellite and like get the glow from that. Um, Cause you never quite feel like you can be completely in it. Um, but I also really loved Klaus mostly just because of the performance and just, I love just the realities of how someone would actually cope, you know, self-medicating and, and how do you cope with um, like the idea that you can literally speak with the, to the dead, which is like the least, to me, the least fantastical power. Like uh, there are people who can com commute. That's just my belief. So um, I really liked Klaus as well. Um, I think I agree with five. I think I was very serious as a kid. <laughs> um, but the moment where he like runs out and like jumps through like three times, I don't know why, but that scene like resonated with me a lot where he was just like, someone else is trying to limit me um, mm -hmm. and I am not going to be limited by this. And it obviously had very dire consequences, but I, I saw a lot of myself in that, um, in the, in that sequence. And so um, I think he'll always hold like a little special place in my heart. Also, that's such of, a good scene. Kind of a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's what years of isolation does to you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And we'll having only out. a medicate. Yeah. Totally. How about you, Jordan? Oh, man. I did not come up with my own answers to this question. Um, mm -hmm. I think, weirdly, maybe. Luther, like I'm the oldest child and I feel like I'm always sort of the responsible one, but then him like doing this project that like wasn't real, that he like thought was so important mm. and then it was like, oh my God, did I just waste my whole life? Like I hate how deep I felt that, you know? So just kind oh, yeah. of being like, <laughs> just kind of being like, not everything, you know, I, I feel like I have like a handful of of situations where either intentionally or not like kind of got taken advantage of or like, you know, things just sort of got twisted and then afterwards you're like, what are we even doing here? Um, right. And then falling apart like he did, like all of that was a little too real. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, let's do, let's do like season two is coming up um, yeah. really soon. And some of you may already know from the comics or like, I don't know how much they've teased already. I know basically nothing about what's actually happening in season two. So this can be real or not real, <laughs> depending on if you know things. But um, I wanna talk about like, what would you like to see in the next season? Or like, what would you like to see expanded upon? Um, it's, it can either be something that you're excited that you think is actually gonna happen or something that you just like, from what you know of the universe, you feel like would be an awesome thing to, um. to learn about. So there, there's a like, there's the so in the comic books, um, the the dad is an alien like lizard person <laughs> basically what? who like takes on the form of a man, um, and then I remember watching the first season and it was like it, they never really addressed it if they were gonna keep that part of it, but like it seemed like he was traveling at some point in the past that seemed too far off from where he adopted the kids. And he was already oldish looking. So I'm like, okay, maybe he is an alien. Um, and so I I kind of want to know if he like, if like they're all stuck in a time loop because from what we saw from the season two trailer, they're like in the sixties. And so mm -hmm. thus the kids weren't born at that point. So they're in their like OG bodies. Um, mm -hmm. And just want to know if like they're the reason why he knows that all these kids are like gonna be born at this time because this is before social media so like how do people know that like all these births happen across like the globe at the same time um 
And so like, m- like maybe like if they were all just from America, like, okay, like it's a couple cities, but like he got them from different parts of the world. Um, mm-hmm. And so I would be really interested to see if like, they've just mistakenly created a time loop every time they try to save their world. Cause they go like back and back and back mm-hmm. in time. And they just mm-hmm. create their own his- like history. The and like, story. yeah. Because, like, already we saw that with, like, them already creating the end of the world by number five trying to save the world and, like, all this stuff happening. So I, I'm interested to see if we're, we're just going to get, like, time loops and time loops and time loops of what's happening. And, like, are they creating their own destiny? I totally want to expand on that because that's one of the, the time, uh, like, sectionalities that I want to see in it, but also... Mm-hmm. Uh, based off of, uh, I think it's the first trade where Klaus sees heaven or like yeah. supposedly what heaven is. I mm-hmm. want to see that entirely expanded. I want to know mm-hmm. if that is, ended, is ever going to end up being like a thing. Um, but the time thing is way more important to me, obviously. <laughs> I love time I think, so much. I think the thing that I appreciate the most about like the, the first season um, was like, it's especially with Klaus's like, um, getting sober or not and and sort of struggling with recovery and deciding whether or not he wants to be in recovery that felt very accurate and very true in a lot of ways and i'd love to see more of him and ben and just sort of them talking through or figuring out trauma together because ben clearly has carried a lot yeah Um, yeah so yeah yeah yeah, I'll add to that because that's that's what I was gonna say. Like since Ben was like dead um, mm-hmm. for most of season one, I'm really excited for him to like not be permanently fridged, um, and to see like what in in this timeline what he gets to do in his his second chance. Yeah. Is there anything, Emily? You wanna? In one thing that. Oh yeah. I'm sorry if I'm breaking up. I don't know why. My Wi-Fi has been really sketchy the last couple of days. It's um, okay. You're fine. But <laughs> um, but I think one thing that I'm, like, concerned about, this isn't really me wanting something to happen. It's me wanting something not to happen. Because I saw the trailer, and Allison and Luther were not <laughs> together in any of the trailer uh, blips. And if they take that away from me, I don't know <laughs> if I'm going to be in this fandom anymore. <laughs> because I get that. Like, like interracial couple representation is so scarce and so important as somebody who's biracial and who is also somebody who a, a large portion of my life has been in interracial relationships. And I, I just like normally... Um, I was talking to a friend about this, how often it's like, you'll see the couple and then something tragic happens to one of them. There's always something yeah. that happens. Like every time there's an interracial couple, one of them blows up unexpectedly or one of them dies that episode and you never see them. Make, like there's just like, it's never, it can just be a healthy, happy thing. Um, and so like, I think that was a huge part of why I loved season one and why I loved um the the show as a whole because it was like okay like i don't know how healthy it is to be in love with your brother or whatever but like (laughs) like Like the dance scene like luther and allison's dance scene like i've never seen anything really like that from like an interracial couple perspective um on a mainstream tv show and so like i just if they try to take that away and then make it more um something in one way i don't know i just i i I honestly don't think i can handle that so if that goes away i will no longer be in this fandom i'm like like, i'm gonna drop kick this show (laughs) (laughs) i'm not kidding i i I can't it happens so much in mainstream media um they just always are like like oh we're gonna tease you it's almost like it's like a fictional thing like interracial relationships are fictional they're too fictional to just be exist in in media and so i yeah i would be really upset if they if they took that away from the 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 bait and switch Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and that's what's so hard about a fandom that's still going that you like have to you know navigate how it happens yeah 
I'm trying to think um, if there's anything else. Yeah. Do you do you have to pop out, Emily, or are you? Uh, soon. Okay, because I was gonna ask. I might do. Cool. I was gonna ask a question. I'll I'll see um, if you want to answer first before you have to go. Um, I want to talk about the fashion in this show because it's really good. Hey. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I wanted to catch you before you have to run. If you, uh, there isn't like a particular question. I just want to talk about like you know if anyone has any favorite scenes or outfits or like what you all think about um, the styling of the show because it's fantastic. Yeah, if I could go first, I'll I'll jump yeah, in go really quick because I don't know when this meeting's gonna start and I'm gonna have to totally. just, like run. But um, I am so excited for the whole '60s aesthetic in general. Um, I am doing. I already have all. Of, well, I'm wearing half of it. Um, my stuff for one of Allison's cosplays for her 1960s. Um, she's got like a yellow dress on, and this one's gonna be altered, but it'll it'll be like that. Um, and yeah, I think that that. It's, it's super relevant to right now because like mid-century modern is very in and like a lot of 60s vibes. So I think it actually is gonna tie in really well with like current fashion trends. Um, just as a, a fact of like, I didn't have any trouble finding things from, <laughs> from nice. the show um, that were just mainstream. So I'm really excited yeah. for pretty much all of the 60s dresses that Allison is wearing. Um, I, I didn't even notice anything else the rest of the characters were wearing, <laughs> to be honest, because when I was watching the trailer, I was just like, okay, yeah, that and that, and just like putting together a shopping list. So I, yeah, I'm super, I'm super excited to see Allison's whole wardrobe. Also, cause she's super fashionable. And I think that's oh, yes. another reason I relate to her because I love fashion and she's just like always got the cutest outfit. So I, I think it'll be awesome to see. I, I was gonna. And on that note, oh. I have to pop out. Um, Bye. But thank you, Thanks for uh, joining us. For having me. Yeah. Bye. I was gonna say like the, one of the other two reasons that Allison and Klaus were my favorite was because first of all they shared fashion. They look Klaus good. Was, uh, Klaus was forever stealing Allison's stuff, oh, but they true. looked I... so good. I was like, these are if I could like afford these type of clothing, stylistic goals. Mm -hmm. um, and it's actually it's funny because it was the like stylistically the whole show was very much of like if modern era kept a lot of like 60s elements or like 70s elements mm -hmm. um and just like we just kind of stopped progressing in certain areas um but it had like a future twist to it which i always find really really interesting and intriguing because like one of my favorite things of time travel shows is just like oh like if you change one thing in the past how does that affect the future and it's always just like one little thing of like oh so and so wasn't bored but like they took it to a whole nother level of just saying um oh like this like we just wouldn't have cell phones or like we would be stuck in certain areas with computer wise and our fashion would be this way and i was just like oh the fashion on the show the styles just i love it <laughs> but the producers at some point must have like been like ah oh, yeah we're totally keeping that since you know mom and everything was very 60s inspired mm -hmm. uh, drew you know such a funky weird section but like klaus uh first of all whoever the costume designer for the show sorry guys my dog is dreaming <laughs> <Okay. laughs> yeah, dreaming. Dream. um <laughs> klaus is like sloppy florida goth dad and that's my whole aesthetic so uh, <laughs> yeah not only cast klaus and then seeing all the outfits i was like uh oh, never related but so again I love all the the tiny tiny elements that you can just sort of like notice on on you know I I my favorite ones are the class on Chacha's jacket where it's just like that sort of like old what I would think about is and I don't know if this is true because I don't know enough about fashion is like if you had like a little music box or whatever and like it yeah. seemed very much like that rather than like a button on a jacket or a blazer mm -hmm. um and i just love i love that those elements can make it into a tv show because i do feel like comics allow you in that medium to be like a little quirkier um and so uh it's cool to see it in tv as well 
Um, I also actually just really liked the design of their like school uniforms. Yeah. I thought it was kind of like like how Harry Potter has kind of like a a line of clothing that you could kind of feel yourself wearing in the context of like witchy vibes. Um, this one is like an updated, like more kind of uh, clean cut. But it's funny too, because it, it, it goes back to um, My Chemical Romance and mm -hmm. I'm Not Okay mm -hmm. and that era and that style and how you can see the connection uh, stylistically and aesthetically between the two. So it's really cool to kind of see that through line um, even at this point, like 15 years later or whenever that video came out. Uh, so yeah. Still holds up. It really does, yeah. it really does. Yeah, Klaus, like, <laughs> I, I was thinking about trying to put together yeah, I was trying to put together, I was thinking about putting together like a casual Klaus cosplay for this. And so I was looking at his outfits and I love them. And I have never worn a single thing that he's ever worn. Like I was like, do I have any of this in my closet? I was like, nope, 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 nope. nope, nope. It's so much mesh. It's so much like, yeah, it's yeah. so fantastic. Textures. And yeah. 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 And I was like, oh, that's not what I look like, but I would like to. <laughs> The funny thing is, like, I think I dress like Ben the most. Like, I'm just in like Dude. dark, like uh -huh. jackets and know, hoodies. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, I just want to be Klaus. And I'm like, yeah, oh yeah. no, we're all just gonna have to try harder. I did. <laughs> we all have I loved how comfy Vanya's looks were. Yeah, um, right. Uh, yeah, right. Where I was like, mm, I feel like Ellen Page just wears that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah, that's what I was that's thinking. What I was thinking. <laughs> I was like, this is like Bonnie, like Ellen Page was like, yeah, no, I'm just going out of this. That's <laughs> like Ellen Page with superpowers. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Literally just dressing it for Ellen Page. Yeah. I, when, she, when she was first on screen, I was like, so she's playing herself? What's happening? Yeah. yeah. Uh, also, I'm fine with that, you know? Yeah, yeah. Into yeah. it. <laughs> so into it. Um, yeah. I actually was going to talk about, like, in the season two trailer, I do like, because I was talking about the aesthetics of season one, but, like, it, we're going back to the 60s, and it's, like, it's more comic-y, which I enjoy, because it's, like, that's, like, that 60s comics era hype, um, and it, like, bled through in how the show looks, and, like, they have one of my favorite <laughs> villains, but, like, they, like I thought they were gonna change him because I'm like, how are they gonna just do a goldfish with a whole human body? And I'm like, they did it! They did the thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so like I'm really excited to see like what the fashion like Klaus being a cult leader or like it just yeah. being like in that whole and then like Ben is still Ben is still in some hoodies and short and I love it. Um, so I I just like that it seems every point they make with either how it's filmed, how the world looks around it, and their clothing is very, very intentional, which I always enjoy yeah. in a in a show because mm -hmm. it pulls you into that world. Um, and like season one, yes, they made it a little bit more down to earth in terms of like the the source versus translating into a show and like like not having a really gimmicky um, superhero like a super villain and, and like making giving people more purpose. But like there was still that element of like yes, this is, this could be modern world, but it's not because they don't have cell phones. They don't have personal computers. They have to go into the library and use these old style, um, like filter systems and computer bases. And like, um, only mis like the, the Hargreaves seem to like be able to go into space. Cause like only number one space boy was on space and on the moon. Mm -hmm. Um, and so like, it's it it allows you to immerse yourself into the world because you attach to things you know, but also like be like ah, but I'm in a new whole new world, which is affected by time travel and people be having like these kind of superhero lives. Well, they like marinate you in the first season, right? Exactly. Like, ah, yeah. uh, so now we're getting. Like <laughs> I do like that they changed like the orchestra or whatever just to like John and like his whole vendetta against that you know, situation, yes. make it like easier for you to be like, okay, this is a show I can get into. And then season two, they're just going to be like, now nah, this dude has a goldfish head. So yeah. 
Now the main villain is a goldfish. How do you <laughs> feel about that? I actually haven't seen the trailer yet for season two because I was like, I want to be surprised or whatever, but I knew. Oh, so was sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. Oh, okay. I kind of assumed. Um, but uh, I'm re- with you all bringing up the 60s stuff. I'm like, oh, I'm ready for this. I'm so, yeah. So and it's like so soon now. It's like yeah. two weeks. Yeah. Is it? Oh my God. Time. Yeah, I think it's the last day of July. Yeah. yeah. I think you're right. It comes up the 31st. Okay. I was actually scared because the other day it was uh, trending on Twitter and it was because the full trailer came out. But oh. I was like, did I miss it? And I was like, <laughs> oh, yeah. like I went ahead and like made popcorn. Like I was ready to like just like sit in front of the couch and oh, just watch this. And then I was like, oh, it's just the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> now you have two weeks to get hyped, get ready. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Popcorn, gotta eat it now, I guess. Mm-hmm. This question I wasn't what I sent over, but I feel like we have to talk about it. So this whole panel actually kind of started because I did like a big thirst tweet about Klaus and then we all just talked about how much I love him. But I feel like I just want to talk about who you have the biggest crush on from the show. Like obviously Klaus is mine. Um, Like tortured, tortured souls are my type 100% just watching him and like everything he wears, his whole aesthetic, the like, yeah. Like sad okay. pirate vibe, I can't get enough of. Oh. I feel like I have to go last because mine's is it, mine's is like a prong system. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. intense. I'll, I'll, just, just, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just jump on the Klaus bandwagon. Yeah, um, and uh, yeah, it's just I, my thing is like he's like a, a hard boy and a soft boy at the same time. Like I like soft boys, but also like he has, he's like a soft boy with an edge. Um, and I- Can we talk it? Can we talk about how Diego's like, like a, like, like wants to be a hard boy, but is like softer uh, than Klaus? Yes, yes. Uh, and this is part of my prong system. I have- I was literally about to say, I have two, Allison number one and Diego's my number two, only because he's like, He's outside bad boy in right, right. uh yeah. baby bitch on the other side. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Yeah. Um so if we're going by characters, um okay. I am too much like Klaus to actually be like fully attracted to Klaus. Got um, it. So basically you all have a crush on me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm too much like Klaus. Like I love his style of everything. I am. I would very much be like the person going after Ben, being like, "Oh no!" But you're so tortured because you you've got these demons inside of you. Literally, you're bringing demons from the other side. Um, and also Diego because he's like that soft boy that's just like, "Oh, you think your heart? Oh, sweetie, sweetie, you're so tortured. Yeah. Let me come fix you real quick." <laughs> <Try> so hard. <laughs> You try so hard. Um, well, and Allison. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, no, no. And I was just going to say Allison for the same reason where she's just like, I don't want to use my powers. Right. Because I, I could be too powerful. And I'm like, sweetie, come here. Let me, just, come <laughs> here. Let me soothe your souls. Um, but actor wise, like everyone, everyone is yeah. so freaking hot. Like, yeah. Yeah. I loved Luther and Merlin. I was like upset because I was like, he's like, he was the soft boy in Merlin like he was the big he strong, always had like nice. sleeveless like yeah he was oh always sleeveless God. like he could not be contained his guns could not be contained um and he was always like the like but we should just all get along and I'm like you right you right yeah <laughs> it was very strange to see him as Luther I think because yes. I was so used to him being this like very very sweet hot nice. knight yeah <laughs> yeah it was very weird where i was like i don't i don't think i like luther very much um maybe it's because he's like a little bit too similar to me in some ways but <laughs> like, there were some moments where i was close. like this is my brain because because he's not like yeah. this he's not and um diego like irl is also like the sweetest like like following him on Instagram was a mistake because he's like Aww. the sweetest fucking thing. And he's always like very goofy. And I'm like, oh, this is like pinnacle. Like you're soft and goofy. Let's go. Um, I think I've talked to Jordan about my crush on Emmy who plays Allison. Cause I'm like, she was in Hamilton and then she was Angelica. Like I just knew well, too much so about her. Well, so this was, this is perfect. <laughs> I was going to say that, um, I don't know if we have any questions from viewers, but the question I was going to end on, which is well, we're just doing it already is like, let's talk about these actors in other stuff that we love them in. Cause that's oh what God. this always turns into anyway. <laughs> um, oh, so yeah. we can do that. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Cool. So we'll we'll do this. Um, oh. oh. I'm so good at this. Okay, sorry. All right. So, <laughs> oh, wanting, to, wanting to watch the show, what's your pitch of why the show should be watched? Huh. It's like one of the few, I would say, one in hundreds of comic adaptations that was actually done well in a yeah. TV show. And um, actually, yep. like cheesy, you know, like tropey, you know. Mm -hmm. It felt very like very much like they were able to take characterization that I think often takes like a little bit longer and they did it in a way where I was like, oh, I don't feel like I'm lacking. I don't feel like mm -hmm. I'm, yeah. you know, um, really missing out on on that characterization that would have been in, in the comics. You know, I think they did a really nice job making everyone, giving everyone their time too. Um, yeah. And yeah. So I think it's, it's yeah. worth it because you'll find somebody that you really connect with. Um, yeah. Probably not who you expect. I would say the thing that definitely the execution is why you should watch it because it's a it's it's a very particular world and the way they explore horror, the way they explore mystery, the way they explore like yeah. being super powered, they do really well. Like I I could not hold that against them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, you have two weeks before the second season, so now is the time. Yeah, yeah. that's <laughs> right. And there's yeah. like and and the climax is like really earned it yes. doesn't kind of like yes. cut out like it actually builds up and you're kind of like i find it, it for me it was a slow burn and that i kind of watched it and i was like okay and then as each episode progressed um i feel like it earned its its second season yeah i think going off of both what you and rose said too like nothing really fell flat i'm always prepared for everything to fall flat with comic mm -hmm. adaptations 20 right, right. which is fine but this i was like oh okay it's actually really good yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, i'll say it's like one it has a killer soundtrack so if you love shows with really That's good soundtracks so it has an amazing killer soundtrack i still mm -hmm. listen to it to this day it's involved and two it's basically like if you're a fan of Marvel, if Odin was in charge of the X-Men versus Professor X, because Odin is a terrible father. <laughs> and so is, so is Mr. Hargreaves. Um, so if you were ever like, what would the X-Men look like in a modern world with Odin as their dad? That's Umbrella Academy. <laughs> <laughs> because so maladjusted children become maladjusted oh adults. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and so that's true. all I have to say about that. Uh, yeah. Right that's, that's my so new tagline. <laughs> 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 oh, was your father. <laughs> Oh <laughs> well, if any other questions come up before we're done, but yeah, let's let's end it on like <laughs> let's talk about these actors and the actresses and how great they are because you were kind of already doing it, Eileen, you were talking about. Yeah. Um, Allison. So Allison, if you don't know, is um, she was in the, like, she was in the ensemble cast for the original Hamilton. Um, and then on the national tour was Angelica Schuyler. Um, so mm -hmm. like she can sing, she can rap, she can dance. She is multifaceted and multi-talented. Um, we were discussing this before. Me and Rose were fighting for who's Robert Sheehan's number one fan here. <laughs> No, <sighs> I will gladly so take the good. number two spot. It's okay. <laughs> number two is still close enough to the top. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Another he's one a, too. Oh, yeah. Another. Let's go for it. Do yeah. It. Oh, great. Ooh. What were your favorite character moments from season one, and what are you most looking forward to in season two? Seeing in season two. Cha Cha and Hazel trying to figure out like when they're gonna be bad. And, and yeah. like, that yeah. was probably to me the most dynamic thing of like when to be bad. When it, it reminded me kind of of Pulp Fiction, um, in that yeah. way, um, those two characters, and I, I really liked their moments. Um, yeah, they had such great, uh, such great. You know, like this is a nine to five job vibes. Yes, yeah, yeah, that yeah, I was yeah. like, oh, I feel <laughs> that. <laughs> but it was, a, it was but also, also like. like but then I'm a philosopher too. It's like the, the normal guy who works his nine to five and punches in, but has thinks of other things and the like quotes Nietzsche or something. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, my favorite moment was uh, Klaus going back in time and like experiencing yeah. the Vietnam War. Um, 
because like not only did like we get to see him fall in love um but also like i feel like a lot of the torture and this is just personally i always felt like a lot of his torture with understanding his powers was that he didn't understand the pain that these ghosts were dealing through because like mm -hmm. he was being a kid and like a lot of like especially when you talk to mediums um in real life they, a lot of it is just like you get this phantom pain of theirs um and like if you don't know how to understand it you're always going to be scared of it um mm -hmm. and you see like as soon as he goes through the vietnam war he learns to love um he sees somebody that sees him as somebody better right. um sure he's going through this pain but it's like it helps open up other parts of his power um and i thought that that was like a great way to show it because like nobody else i don't think anybody else has really done it that way where you're just like oh you have a medium they're scared of their powers like once they go through this pain they understand like what it is to lose somebody in war lose people so quickly it's like mm -hmm. oh now i understand the pain that comes with my power mm -hmm. which i think is really interesting um and what i look forward to in season two um just seeing what kind of hijinks they do in the 60s like <laughs> we already saw that everybody's kind of split off and like why did they split off like they were they were going back in time to like stop something what made them decide to like be in different places again mm -hmm. um and also to see if like if my idea of the time loop is right if they end up like finding hargreaves and being like hey listen you're gonna find these kids they're all born on this day without previously being pregnant like they're gonna have powers, this is what's gonna happen. And like, yeah. we make a time loop. I was gonna say something based off of like uh, Klaus's sexuality and how that entire character development sort of like did resonate in mm -hmm. a, I think subconscious level for me, but also the the fact that number five, also, hey, what's up, Justin? Uh, thanks for the question. Um, number five and his grasp of struggling with accepting isolation for being the end all be all for the rest of his life. And then like how he structurally fits things almost kind of trying to go back to normal and him still having this responsibility of being like, I have to fix everything, even though he has to like go back or whatever. Um, and honestly, his character development in general versus the graphic novel, because I really enjoy him as a character in the show, but I really don't enjoy him in the graphic novel. So I'm hoping that, you know, I'm looking forward to him staying this complex character that you resonate with in season two, you know? So mm -hmm. in, yeah. yeah. Do you have anything to add, Rose? I don't think sure. so. I, I, I just, they do such a great job with characterization that I, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting more from everybody. Yeah. And just sort of like feeling for everyone all the time. <laughs> I think, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm looking forward to, so I probably should read the comics just to give myself more context. Sometimes I have a hard time like really understanding what's happening and I feel like that's cool. Like the show is not like, here are all the rules, here's everyone's right. powers, here's how it works. But then sometimes like I do like understanding that more. So I'm excited for season two. I'm sure we'll get more information about like what's going on and what who these kids are and what they're doing. Um, and like maybe it'll be new stuff or maybe it'll be sort of explaining things that were mentioned in season one. But I think just having even more context of like what the story is, um, something I'm excited for. Um, do we have any more fangirling to do about, about anyone? Don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like we, I feel like we have to mention Misfits because we haven't yet. But if yeah. I yeah. watched yeah. that show, I love yeah. Robert. It's really funny because the original. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, what I was going to say is I actually sometimes sometimes hesitate to recommend that show to like new people um, if you didn't watch it <laughs> okay. in yeah. when it came out uh, oh, because yeah. like I there's some cringe there's some real cringe in that I show. Mean, I know well. what you're talking about now, which yeah. I totally. Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, but yeah. by that same token, like I, I was like a big fan of Robert in that, but also Ewan. Um, and yeah. so it's been like really interesting to to just sort of see people. And then um, the guy who came in and replaced Robert's character after like season two, yeah. he was yeah. in uh, he was in Creature, Creature, right? right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. In Creature. yeah, so yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the yeah. first two seasons of Misfits 
I would recommend. Yeah, yeah. Um, but there's so. certainly some cringe stuff, and I think British television does things and has um, like different cultural things that like we we just would never do it here. Like it would, yeah. it would yeah. never happen. Um, yeah, yeah. But Robert, to me, has always like to me he kind of has this. Uh, new age, like Jim Carrey kind of vibe yeah. to him, and uh, that like he's so good at being a character actor that you don't even know he's being a cat. Like not to ooh, yeah, like, you know how people look down on oh I'm a character actor, but the thing is like he knows how to be a character, like a character without being a character, and I think that's really hard. Um, and I think also his his storyline is one of the best things of Misfits, of him trying yeah. to figure out yeah. if he has a power and being convinced that he doesn't and how that's yeah. like literally yeah. what happens to Vanya. Like, I was him. thinking that actually, I was like, yeah. the wrong yeah. person. <laughs> I've seen this before, but obviously yeah. totally different. Um, um, it is funny, because if you do want to see his range in character acting, one of the things he did right after Misfits, I think it was like before and after Misfits, British television and Iron, Irish television is like they film when the actors are around. But he did Love Hate, where he plays like basically a mobster that's like trying to turn the tides, but then gets pulled in more. Um, and you get to see that uh, Adrian, who who plays Peter Baelish um, in Game of yeah. Thrones, oh, they've both yeah. been in it, and Ruth Nega, who I love, is in it. Um, oh but you, it's one of his more serious mm -hmm. roles. Um, but yeah, he he has a very interesting filmography that I just enjoy because it's like <laughs> like Jay was saying, he always gets super into his roles. Um, He's in yes. the road within, which is like this indie with Zoe Kravitz. And oh yes, yeah, where he plays like, like a battling. Drug. Yeah, he yeah, plays an like they're both in rehab and like they uh, escape rehab. And then he was in Bad Samaritan with David Tennant, and so those are like oh, literally yes. two of my favorite actors from across oh, the yeah. yeah, um, and that movie is like the perfect B sloppy movie. Like I love it so much. <laughs> no one I'm but trying to remember the name of the one he is in with Rupert Grant, just because I Sorry, watched Tom. it. Oh, there you go, Cherry Mom, because I watched yeah. it because they were both in it. And I was like, I love, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love Robert Sheeran. And then I was like, oh, no. no, no, no. <laughs> that movie is I know, wild. I don't need to watch this. Yeah. It is wild. Um, and for those who forgot, because some of the panelists forgot earlier, he is in the Mortal Instruments. Yeah, I movie. super forgot that. I never you watched don't need it. To watch I, it. Might can, I think you can watch his clips on YouTube. That's all. Yeah, there you go. Someone that must movie. have a super cut. Yeah, the rest of that movie hurts my brain. <laughs> I believe but, his, <laughs> but he's actually adorable in it. And I'm like, I he just was want also to also in the Mortal Engines. That's what she Wait, just... really? No, he's oh, the those are two engines and the Mortal Engines. Right. No, no, no. I want to see that movie. That's a movie, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think I, I heard that, that in my head. And he yeah, no, I like the sidekick in like both, I think. Yeah. Okay. Oh. The beginning of this of 2019 that that came out? Yeah, yeah it just came out in 20, of, Mortal in, Engines came in 2018. 2018, there we go. It was, uh, even, it was December 2018. Uh, and I then the like Mortal it. Instruments is actually purportedly the reason that he left Misfits. Oh, that's right. Because, because they thought it was going to be big, big in the US. Yeah. That was 2013. That's right. <laughs> but that's actually why he left Misfits. Yeah. And it was mm -hmm. not. And no one's ever. <laughs> <laughs> that movie was just. I think I mean, it was on HBO back and I was like, "What is this?" Yeah, what? I think that's why I ended up seeing it. Like what? it was on what? TV, and I was just like, "Oh wait, right, he, he's in this." Let me. And then I was like, "Oh no, 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 <laughs> no, thank yeah. you." <laughs> we all make mistakes in our career. Right? <laughs> I mean, but the cast was like good because I think they had who was Magnus in that one. Uh, I have no idea. Got you know, it's very attractive. I just <laughs> I feel like this show though definitely proves that like a grade A cast can be successful because a lot of movies that are really bad have a wonderful casting and it's like whoops. yeah, yeah. yeah. Godfrey Gao was Magnus yeah. in the movie, yeah. and that's the two people I watched that movie for, and the two people that I was mad at for ages because of that. Like y'all <laughs> made me watch this. 
Yeah, maybe that's the takeaway. If you like the people in this, this will actually be yeah. really kind of amazing that you can actually watch and not be <laughs> sad yeah, about yeah. it afterwards. <laughs> I just love it. I feel yeah. like that's, yeah, does anyone have any last thoughts about Umbrella Academy? I feel like we successfully were big fans of the show. Start eating Twizzlers. Cause, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you ever want to talk theories, hit me up on like Twitter or Instagram. Yeah, and let's go back and let's do theories. all of our say we all have it in our in our name plates. Yeah, um, just like, yeah let's yeah, say just say where we can keep chatting online. Um, do you want to start, Liana, again? We can go. Uh, I'm Liana back. Kangas at Liana Kangas on Twitter and Instagram, and I also do Twitch. So if you ever see me on there <laughs> once in a while, yes, I would love that. Uh, we should do a show together one day and just only talk about stuff, and I'll draw whatever. Uh, Perfect. <laughs> I'll make food. I'll bake. Well, oh you my love gosh. That's well <laughs> um, so I, Rose, uh, run two subscription boxes. So if you're into Charmed, add the Box of Shadows, um, and then Fan Mailbox is is our sort of more general fandom uh, subscription stuff. And we just did some cool stuff, so come check it out. I'll go last. You can go, Che. Okay. Um, che in Wonderland on Instagram, and then on Twitter it's Che in Wonderland, but it's with a U <laughs> instead of an O because someone who doesn't use said O doesn't <laughs> it. They don't even use their account. I um, love that. Petition for them to change it. Actually, mm -hmm. I, yeah, I should do that. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was like, I thought you were going to say more. Um, I'm Eileen. I don't know how to use social media properly. I never got one username across the board. It's the bane of all my friends. Um, really so I'm, it is friends, really hard. I get it. I'm, I'm like, going to choose one. We'll do a poll. We'll do a poll. Yeah. Um, I am the amazing kin on Instagram. I remember this time. <laughs> I did. I once switched it. And slow pace walker on Twitch and Twitter. Um, and I do a lot of baking and drinks for nerdy things. Um, I talk a lot about the things that I like if you want to discuss things. Um, and I also talk a lot about ADHD um, and being in fandom and stuff. So yeah, so if you want to hit me up, that's cool. Have you made an Umbrella Academy drink yet? I, I did. I was going to drink it, but then I wasn't sure if I was be allowed to drink. <laughs> Uh, post camera. it on your post it on your Instagram, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna post. Yeah, I was gonna post it. it the week before. I Let's have one for every do character. Digital oh drinks. That's awesome. Allison is Leading a very classy up. kind. It's a it's an intense martini because I'm like that girl probably needs to drink a lot. Uh, <laughs> Luther's is a is a bomb because uh, I feel like that boy is just going getting bomb shots. But yeah, I will have. I will let. Sh I will post. If you follow me on Instagram, I'll post all the uh, actors, all the characters, sorry, not the actors, all the character drinks. Um, and oh, I have one for Chacha too. Stewie just posted that Leftfield Online, who is putting on this panel, is doing an umbrella an umbrella academy watch along. So maybe we can all do like a right. happy hour during yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. First we'll time do happy hours. hours. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Cocktails are my favorite. How we have do. we not talked about Oh my God. Oh, as, long, as long as we can modify them to not have alcohol. Yes. Yeah. No, they all are. They all, for the most part, the only the martini, but there is um there's dupe to make martinis oh, non-alcoholic. Like beautiful. so, you get you still get the flavor, but because most martinis are pure alcohol, there's dupe drink like that tastes like martinis no. should. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Cool. It's a lot of elderflower yeah. for gin. Ooh, I'm down. I'm so I also, wow. I just realized my username is wrong. Uh, I mean, it's uh. not wrong, but uh, <laughs> Jordan today is just like my life. But Jordan today NYC <laughs> is the clothing company that's been closed for three months, so I forget. But it's opening it's up. It's coming again. back next, next week. Yeah. Yeah. Next week we'll have clothing again. And uh, Sartorial Geek, if anyone wants to check out our geeky lifestyle magazine podcast, all the things. Um, but thank you guys so much. This has been wonderful. And yeah. thank you, Leftfield, um, Awesome Town in Rose City, for doing this. And let's all chat online about season two. I'm so Yay. excited. Yay. I'm so excited for season two. Yeah. Thank you so much for inviting Yeah. yeah. And everybody, check out the here. watch alongs. Yes. Yeah. Let's all watch it together. I mean, that's, I'm going to be doing it anyway. Yeah. So. I'm <laughs> we'll watch it together. <laughs>
Let's do it. Watch it and okay. drink. Okay. All right. Start dancing. 